Yeah, so Gerald's in the background. He says, yep, just about done. So you guys should have this in your hands this week with the supply and demand indicator. Let's go over the, first of all, um, supply and demand. Um, let's look on the crude chart, first of all. Let's, let's first talk about supply and demand and why is it important and why is it uh, um, a leading indicator. Um, hey, 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 guys. Hey, Derek. What we have to uh, understand is the market uh, supply and demand is, is timeless. I talked about this today. It's timeless, meaning, you know, this is how the market has worked from the origin of the stock market and the futures market, et cetera. It's all about order flow, supply and demand. Let's go over the basics of supply and demand and exactly why these lines are so accurate and how we can benefit from it as traders. All right, so when demand increases, price goes up, okay? Now this is how the, the, the lines are programmed. When demand increases, price goes up. It moves higher, right? When supply increases, price moves down, okay? So when demand increases, price moves up. When supply increases, price moves down. The sideways, move, the sideways movement are when supply and demand are the same, but it doesn't last that long. So they'll, they'll pause and then they'll continue. So a supply and demand line looks like this. You'll go up, you'll have a hard move up. You'll go sideways, and then you'll have the continuation on a hard move up again. Where these lines are drawn, this is a typical, right there is a typical demand line. A supply line is when you get major sellers or speed in the market to the downside, and it doesn't matter what educator, professional trader, algorithm developer you you talk to this is the basic supply and demand formula okay I mean it's not really that hard to understand if you come if you go up you go sideways you go up that's called a demand line right there which I'll draw in a second but sellers if you go down the sellers are coming in and you go sideways the sellers come back in because there's more supply okay these lines are generated from this point, that level, right here. So when you see these drawings automatically draw, this is the demand line. So what happens a lot is you will see the market come back to this level and bounce right off of it. We had trades today that was to the exact tick, and I'll show you that in a second. That is how it is generated. So let me put these in. This is a this is how supply and demand works. The beautiful thing about the futures market is that um, that this is all electronic, an electronically traded market. So it's all about leaving the footprint. So there is your demand line being drawn based upon. that move up okay so why is that line so important why does it work so well how does it call these inflection points because what happens is is I use the analogy today in the in the room is that if you're an institutional trader or if you're a bank or you're a hedge fund or you're a prop firm you don't want to get long here because the prices are what if you take breakout trades on the first push up, prices are what? Anybody? What are they? I'll teach you a little bit about supply and demand right now. What are they if you get the first big push up on a breakout? Then you start getting filled long. Where are, are what 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 are you getting filled at? Meaning, is a price cheap or expensive? Is price cheap or expensive? If you see that big giant push up. A higher price means what? A higher price means it's more expensive, right? It's increasing. So as demand increases, as demand increases, it becomes more expensive. So if I'm a bank or a hedge fund or an institutional trading firm or if I'm a high-frequency algorithm or if I'm Goldman Sachs trading my Delta program or whatever and I'm trying to get X amount of shares long, do you think they're going to get filled, yes or no, in this big move up? Yes or no? 
you think they're going to get the, the, their, their fills in this type of move? There's no way in heck they can get filled there because it is a runaway market. Because if price moves higher, that means there's lots of demand. So they cannot get filled. So what happens is, is the market does what? It goes sideways. And once it goes sideways, this is when they show their hand. Because now they're showing, they're tipping their hand off to you and I as traders. Because now this is where they start accumulating. Then you see a big break forward again. Big move up. Now, do you think they participate in this move up? Do you think if you're a big big fund or what have you, is this a great way to do it right there again, yes or no? If you're trying to get long a lot of shares, no, because you're, you're buying high, right? You're buying into the high of the push. So what they will do is they'll now look to go long here on the retest. Because here, the prices are what? Here, the prices are cheaper. Even though we're setting a higher high, even though we're setting a higher high, the prices are still a lot cheaper here on the retest and here on the consolidation or the channel. Prices are cheaper there, right? than buying the big move up because that's when they can accumulate. So this is where traders like us as retail traders need to be involved in. We need to be involved in this. And this is how my supply and demand lines are drawn. They're drawn based upon the supply and demand in the market. Now, your question probably is, well, why aren't there so many lines drawn all day long? Because I need, what do you think I need right here to create this line? Why is the, why is my indicator drawn this line? What do I need right here on this first leg up? I need what? Before the, before it will even volume and speed. You guys are good. Terrence and Tina and Larry, good job. You need two things. You need volume and speed. I need volume to push it up a volume spike and I need speed meaning I need that price to really move away from that level if you know nothing about supply and demand nothing at all at all you take a blank chart and you look at the volume spike with the volume indicator below and you look at the speed where it's coming from a major high or a major low, and it's good getting away from price, and you'll see those two characteristics every single time. Because for a supply and demand line to be active, to be a qualified supply or demand line, you got to have big volume to spike you up because that means there's more demand on the demand line, or you want major sellers coming in on supply line. If not, you're going to have tons of supply and demand lines all day long, right? It's going to be covered. Your chart's going to be covered with lines all over the place. You have tons of lines. We don't want that. We want to find, and this works in all markets. I don't care what market you look at. Obviously, since you members have been seeing this in the room, it stops it sometimes to the exact tick. It usually comes within a couple of ticks. I'll show you how to time it. But this is very, very accurate because what it's doing is it's measuring the footprint of the pause in the market. It's looking for this pause. It's looking for this. It's looking for that pause in the market right here. That pause in the market is where the big money is betting that it's going to be for support and resistance. Right there. Because it's cheaper. Okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that, Frank, in a minute. I'll go over time frames in a minute. So it doesn't matter what Frank's talking about is smaller time versus bigger time frames. If you're a day trader, you're only looking about a couple days back for supply demand because they're fresh lines. And I'll show you how that works. It called some nice big moves today on the S&P and the NASDAQ, and I'll show you. I mean, in the crude. 
NASDAQ also, but if you are a position trader, use this on a larger time frame, right? Supply and demand is universal. It can work on weekly charts, daily charts, monthly charts, and it can work on intraday charts. That answers your question right there, Frank. Because there will be volume spikes on daily charts, intraday charts, weekly charts, and monthly charts. So for these lines to form, it's got to be one of those two characteristics. I mean, those two characteristics, okay? So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to look look to accumulate here and, uh, at the, the pause and the continuation. It's almost like this. When I was a small order execution trader in the 1990s, we're called SOS Bandits. You probably – Seen us written all over the about about how we take big positions on stocks, and then we try to buy the bids, sell the ask, all that stuff. So, what we did is the same thing: is that we would look for this. We look for new highs over here. If I'm trading a, a stock right here, for the for example, the vaccine stocks. Let's look at the vaccine stocks and uh, that's going on right now. They've been hot as heck. There's six stocks I've been watching that just been going crazy, right? I mean, these vaccine stocks have been going nuts. So what they did on the vaccine stocks, I mean, the one of the top ones was M Moderna. It started out at 20 bucks. It's at $81 right now, just in what two and a half months. It did the same thing. What we would do as stock traders, we look for new highs. Moder Moderna set a new high, and not just Moderna, but Novax. Novax was just at 40. It went up what 20, 30 bucks here this week, or last week, week and a half. But we we look for new highs, right? We look for new highs again. That's what these vaccine stocks are doing. We look for new highs again, and then we look for this. We look for a pause, and we look for a channel, and it'd be a tight channel. It could be a bull flag. Sometimes they're bull flags where they get down like this. Looks like a flag. But we but mainly they were just sideways movement. All right. So our buy point then as traders was the first new high breakout. That is one of our favorite patterns to trade. And still today, some of the top traders in the world use that pattern. They'll look for new highs, new lows, new high, new high, new high, new low, new low. They'll look for a one, two week consolidation on a stock. And the tighter the compression, the better, because it went to new highs. They'll look for the first breakout, and they'll also look for the retest. But that was a pattern we used to use. That's the same way supply-demand. So stocks are the same way. They work the same way because it was – what happened was, what you have? Demand, 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 consolidation. And what happened? They go up, they retest it, and it would explode. So – it doesn't matter what markets you look at. Supply and demand is in every time frame, Frank, to answer your question. Okay? Some traders look at stocks on a two- to three-, four-month basis. The vaccine stocks are going nuts right now, absolutely nuts. So that's how we do. So let's look at supply. So supply comes down then. Here's supply. We have more sellers and buyers. Here's this. So, so what happens is, is the smart money – is right here on the supply line. They're right there selling. And then they'll finish their position off on the retest. That's supply. That's demand. And you can look at, talk to thousands and thousands and thousands of traders around the world, and they will tell you this S pattern up and S pattern down is how you calculate supply demand. The only other way you can calculate supply demand is this. And trust me, is it go out and look at tons of YouTube videos or look at different trading rooms. There's only really, really two ways to do it. The other way that you can calculate it, which my system does, I there's there's this other way my lines are created. I'm just telling you how my lines are created so you know these lines, why are they so accurate? This stopped to the this one stopped to the exact tick today for God's sakes. The exact tick. You think that's just by chance? It's because there's really only two ways to calculate supply and demand. So the only way other to calculate supply and demand is this. You have a box top. You have a big demand up. You have an equilibrium where buyers equal sellers. 
and you have a sell-off back down. What's that tell me? You better sell that supply line. And what happens is the major players, what they'll do is they will go lightly at the top right here. They'll go lightly trying to catch the top. But more importantly, they want to sell that retest. Because that retest, it should go. That's the only other way to draw, draw a supply line. The only other, so you got this way to draw a supply line, S, S move down, or a box top. Now, and we talk about box tops all the time in the room. We call them Galaga moves. But here's the other way. Is it the other way, a supply line, and you come down, you have major sellers. You have an equilibrium where buyers and sellers are equal. And then you got major volume spike, and we take out the highs right there. So that means if we take out that high, this high, that means this is a new demand line, and that's how my demand lines are drawn. So now, the major players in the market, they're going to buy here, lightly, and then the professional money is going to take all the money out on the breakout traders, they're going to retest it, and then they're going to drive it back north. Okay? So that's the only two uh, ways these lines can be formulated, is that S move up, S move down, or box top, box bottom. Frank, I'll go over in a sec, bud. Terrence, I'll go over that in a sec, too. All right, are we clear so far on the only two ways to look for – here, let me brought this down. The only two ways that these lines are drawn, one, S formations, two, box tops and bottoms. Are we? Do you understand supply and demand now? Are we good? Give me a why if we understand what I'm talking about, or did I lose everybody in the room? I hope I didn't lose everybody because it's simple supply and demand. That's it. Okay? And you can ask anybody. This is a three, a five sim Renko. All, all, what I'm showing you tonight is five sim Renkos. All five sim. I'll show you the nine sim in a minute. Okay, so now that we know what supply and demand is, this is why these lines come up, all right? I thought that was very important to show you why they come up because some traders, they see these lines come up, they think, oh, it's just uh, trend lines, okay? The cause is order flow. When demand increases, price moves higher. And as demand increases and price moves higher, Terrence, what happens? When the buyers come off and the volume dissipates, what do you think happens to price? It comes down for a retest, and then volume comes back in. And that's all you got to know. You'll see a volume – let's answer Terrence's question. Let me go over these charts. You'll see a spike – and volume here, Terrence, right? And then volume will dissipate on the horizontal move. Then you'll see spike in volume, and then it'll dissipate on the retest. And then you'll see a big volume spike again. That's the cause. Yes, it does. Correct, Frank. Yep. Okay. All right. So, so, since we're all clear... That's why my lines do what they do, okay? Because I don't uh, – you can play this video over and over again. I don't care how many videos you want to look at, not just myself. Look at how hedge funds do it, prop firms, everybody. They're, they're pretty much all the same. S top – I mean S, S uh, moves up, S moves down uh, with major speed. That's your supply demand line, box top, box bottoms. That's why they come up. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the charts. All right, so – the one thing I want you to understand is old supply becomes new demand, and old demand becomes new supply. Yeah, you get this video, Terrence. 
Old supply becomes new demand and old demand becomes new supply. What does that mean? All right. Let me blow this up. What I mean by that is that let's, that's the whole trading day that I showed you because I don't want to show you. I'm trying to show you the, the whole trading day on both the S&P and the NASDAQ. I mean, not NASDAQ. I trade NASDAQ a lot. Sorry. Um, the S&P and the uh, crude. Um, but the NASDAQ works really well with this too, Ron, since you like the NASDAQ. But the, the bottom line is that this is supply demand, and here's one of your top setups. So supply means this, that I come down, and I'm in a downtrend with the moving averages, and I retest this supply line. And these supply lines are automatically generated intraday and the day before, or actually three days back for the 5 sim. So this is supply. This is a supply line. The one thing I want you to get out of this tonight is this. When you see this break, if the market's in a downtrend, it's a simple break, retest. I do not want to close a whole body candle close above that supply line. This is how you can manage your trades or your entries without trading all day long. And you can be very precise in your entries. That supply line, it should come within a couple ticks of it or exceed a couple ticks. I don't care if the wick breaks. Let me blow this up more. I do not want that supply line being closed above, period, once I break it. This is simple ABC short. So we're in a downtrend. Moving averages are down. The simple pattern we're going to look for is ABC longs or ABC shorts. I want to break. You can call it one, two, three patterns if you want. That's how I learned it back in the late 80s, early 90s, but there are ABCs nonetheless. Looking for that pattern. Break, retest, short. On that retest, I do not want the body of the candle, meaning the open versus close, to close above my supply line. Okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that on the long, it happens on the longer time frame, Frank. I'll show you in a sec, bud. So I want to see a break retest trade at this level. But I do not want to close above this level. I want to break, I want to retest, and I want to get a red reversal bar or negative market delta after we get a full retracement. It's got to be above 90%. That is a major sell signal right there. Supply line. It comes down to my demand line. I don't want to take counter trend trades because moving averages are down. You can see it holds it, doesn't close below it. On well, my demand, comes back up. This is another sell, major sell. M top, right? There's your red bar reversal, another sell, because this is my supply line. Now, what I want you to get out of this is this. The best trade you're going to have is a break retest with overall trend. Really easy trades to focus on, right? But let me, let me tell you, the rejection trades are beautiful. So both of them had... Full retracements. This is today's data. I'll go forward as we speak here. But notice how the body of the candle did not close above this before my red reversal bar came in. So that is a sell. But what I wanted you to take from this is this. Not those trade setups per se. Is this. Old supply becomes new demand. And if you can just grasp this in this conference call, if you can just take a step back and understand what I'm saying, you do very, very well with this system. Because what I want you to understand is if this level got rejected, broke and retested, and went down, that means that's an important level. If this level got tested and went down, this is an important level. So that's two times it tested. So guess what happens? Old supply is going to become new demand. And this is the beauty of the system. Because what happens, all these stops that are above here, if anybody knows anything about stops and how they take them out on order flow, they're stop gunning right here, this consolidation. So then the demand, once you break, you retest, it stop right on my symmetry dots here with the full retracement down here. Now look at it. Now these are long patterns. That's a long on a W bottom. That's a long. 
It's a small stop. It stopped right on my symmetry dots too. So see this. Supply became a launching point for demand. Gordon, uh, can you hear me okay? Hey, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Sounds good, Gordon. So that supply becomes a new demand launching point right there, right, on a full retracement. So as the market's moving up then, that's a trade set up. Banged it down, worked right to the demand, worked right to the demand. Came back inside. Right here was a break retest right to my demand line, but you wouldn't take that because it's against trend, but still worked. But look how it came above my supply, retested my demand, and guess what? Your target's the next supply. Now, we all know that old supply, the supply line from yesterday, becomes new demand. So what I want to see is my 1, 2, 3 pattern. I'm more old school. I like, I like calling it 1, 2, 3. Traders call it. ABCs, but I was taught one, two, three, one, two, or ABC, three. There's my launching point again. Look how price right here. I'm sorry, let me make this bigger for you. There you go, guys. Is that better? That's my launching point. It's a straddle. It's straddling in my line. It's not closing below. It's straddling it. And there's my symmetry dots too. This is a major launching point. See the straddle? The candle is straddling the line. It's not closing below it. The body of the candle, the open versus close. I don't care about the wicks. The wicks are for amateur traders. The wicks are for novice investors. We don't care about the wicks. We care about the open versus close relationship because that's supply demand. So as I broke out and I retested, I'm at a full retracement, old supply becomes new demand, and my entry is the first green close, which was positive market delta right there. That is your entry, the close of that bar. Your stop loss is two ticks below that swing low. You should never adjust your stops on this system, ever. My supply demand lines are very, very accurate. If you get stopped out, there's a reason for it. The trade's probably not going to work out. Don't turn a small loser into a large loss. Two ticks below the swing low, period. If you get stopped out, look for the next trade. Do not chase the trade. It should stop right at my supply demand because that's where order flow is. So there's an entry, and then here's the entry. The key is do not take these trades after the second test. The trade on the first test, the trade on the second test, do not take the trade on the third test. It should break through. Because what happened on that trade is old supply became what? Old supply became new demand. Okay, let's move on. We got cranking here. I mean, that was a really beautiful, beautiful trade. That one, what, 32.60 to, that's a 110 tick move with a stop of $120 average. That was a 12 to 1 reward to risk. Let's move on. Okay, here we go. Now, a fresh supply line comes in. This happened right here. Fresh supply comes in right there. Line starts drawing, right? Why did that come in? Because there was speed, speed, major speed right here, major speed, major speed, and it draws in. Okay, so it drew in. What you want to do is you want to look for a first retracement trade, first test. Now, I want to show you how accurate these lines are. I'm going to blow this up. This line came in at 10.30, what, 3 this morning? Let 
load this up a little bit. The high of this bar is 33.45. My supply line is 33.45. So this line was drawn in at 10.33. This sell happened at 10.46. 13 minutes later to the exact tick high. And look at the sell-off. Symmetry.confluence. I love seeing also symmetry.confluence. This one actually had major divergence also. I won't go into that, but we had a lot of things telling us that thing's going lower. But another big move, 45 down to 70. That was a 7 to 1 reward to risk. Okay? That's a new supply. The first test is the best on new supply demand lines. Why do you think the first test is the best? The line's formed right here, but the line's formed right there due to volume and speed. Volume and speed, Leo. Exactly. Taking out the order flow, it's a fresh level now. Are we allowed to sell it on the second test? Yes or no? Yes, they get drawn during the day, Gordon, all day long, 24 hours a day. The most of them happen, Gordon, between eh, 7.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock at night, all day long. So this is the first test. Mark comes up. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so this is my five sim Renko. Let me show you something, right? My five sim Renko. I only go three days back right here, three days back. And Jiro has these all preset for you when you get this. That's three days back. Guess what called the low down here? Guess what called the low right here? What do you think I had right here today? And I'll show you in a second. What do you think I had right there at that level? What I have right there at the level for the past 30 days of data, you think, Gordon? What do you think I had that level on my long-term chart? What kind of line? Supply or demand? We had a demand line there, guys, if you watch a trade today, and it caught it twice, double bottom. There's the demand line. I'll show you in a second on my larger, larger time frame. So not only did I know this is my short on the first test, I knew this is the first test off my longer time frame. Watch this. Watch how cool this is. My larger time frame, here is my short. My larger time frame caught this, this line was on here all the way from, me, from two days ago. Why? This line was drawn on my 30-day chart one, two days ago at this level. Why? Why do you think it was drawn at that level? Why do you think it was drawn at that level? Why? What happened to the market? What happened to the market right there? Why do you think this line was drawn in going forward? What happened to the market right here? It's a major turning point, right? Huge turning point. Look at that. Speed, right? We need speed. We need speed in the market. Well, you see how it tested here once? What is old supply? What does old supply do? Old supply becomes what? Old supply becomes what? New demand. See how it caught the low over here? Watch. See this? Old supply here. Here becomes what? Launching point for today. Caught the exact low. Here. 
here. Let me blow it up. Not only did my system call the exact high to the exact tick right there, and this one was a beauty because guess what? If you see going 30 days back, my large time frame come flew with my smaller time frame, 5 and 3, which it did right there, to the exact tick high right there. Not only did my 30 minute or my 30 days back call it on my 9 Simrenko going 3 days back, or 30 days back, sorry, going 3 days back does the same supply level. Demand, demand. You can still trade just off the short term or the long term, Terrence. It doesn't matter. It's looking at two different levels. When they do conflue like that, you got a major turning point. Possible major turning point right there. Now, on the larger time frame then, right, we don't have a lot of levels that pop off on this time frame. This is the 9 Simrenko, my largest time frame I use, 9 Simrenko. I don't have a lot of levels that pop up here. So when you see this, when you see it break through, a level and you retest the level does it close a body of the candle close below it does that close a body of the candle close below it yes or no this demand line yes or no it doesn't right so that line is valid so when I see this close green on the larger time frame you have a possible huge launching point off a larger time frame trade. That's, Frank, how it works on all time frames. You can literally use this. What The technique doesn't change, though. You do not want to close a whole body candle, close below, and then launch. I want to see a straddle. I want to see the open close straddle. Okay? So that's my larger time frame. And it will still plot. Intraday moves, like right here. It caught the double top yesterday. My larger time frame is notorious for catching big moves. Here, it caught the top. This one right here, it came out at 11.48. This is a big trade that we saw in the room. We didn't have any supply and demand lines, and probably traders are freaking out. They're like, wow. Does he even know how to program supply and demand lines, right? Because you're, you're thinking, you're like, heck, there's no supply and demand lines all morning. You're like, what is this guy thinking? I've got no supply and demand all the way up. I mean, it's, it's, he's a looney tune. He doesn't know how to plot supply and demand. Really? Well, what happens is this. Check this out. New supply line comes up. Check this out. Came up right here at 11.48. The high was 32.70. My supply line that came out was 32.71 within one tick, and it went down from 70 all the way down to 31. 170 tick hit from my new supply line. That's not me, and that's not you. That's order flow. So traders were losing their patience. They're like, oh, my goodness gracious, this market's exploding. Now, I did catch some ones on the smaller time frame. I'm talking about larger time frame trading. It's exploding all the way up. They log in at 8 o'clock here. They see this market just going without them with a large, larger time frame. But then they were handsomely rewarded. It caught the high within one tick, and it would just went down 170 ticks. That's a 16 to 1 reward to risk. That is why the fresh supply lines work so well. Okay, so that's larger time frame. Let's get that out of the way. So, let's go back to here. What I want to see then is since it tested once, and I know this is my demand line down here that tested twice called the low. All right, supply, demand. Now, before we get started on the next trade setup, watch. If I ever break this level at 3270, would it be a good sell? Yes or no? If I ever just strictly talking about supply demand. 
If I ever broke this level that tested once and twice at 3270, would it be a good trade setup? Yes, it would. Terrence, you know why? Because rejected areas are launching points for the next trade setup. Terrence, watch. Remember, and this is what I really got to get through to you, to you guys and gals. Terrence, you see how this tests? Let's make this simple. I'm, I'm think I'm losing some traders on this. You see how this level tests once, Terrence, and then twice, and we know that supply, right? Are you with me, Terrence, right there, that supply? You see how, how it, it reacted off of it once, reacted off twice? So we're over in here. We're looking for the market to respond. I know this is a great launching point then. Why? Why is it a great launching point? Because it's been rejected twice, and it went down. It never closed the whole candle above it. It got rejected twice, went down. Hit it down, hit it down. That tells me that becomes new demand. If I get a retest, it should launch. Okay? So reject, rejected trades are the best. So let's watch this. It gets rejected. Down. Am I allowed to sell the next test if it comes up here? Yes or no? If it comes up here, am I allowed to sell the next test? It sold it once here on the new fresh line. If it comes right here, am I allowed to, why? Why, Bill? Anybody? Why am I allowed to sell that? Now, here's the first test. I'm talking right here, right now. Here's the first test. It's a second test trade. We're allowed to sell it. All right, so we come up. We come up with a full retracement, and it tries to test it, right? You're allowed to sell that. I don't care within one or two ticks if you get short there. What I don't want to educate you with is if you're five to six, seven ticks away. If you come with a couple ticks, you get short here. It went down more than 10 ticks, 11, 12 ticks. That's fine. Where you don't want to get involved is the third test. But what I'm kind of trying to show you is, is old support becomes new resistance. And old support becomes – now, we ran out of time during the day. But is this a buy setup right here? Is that a buy setup right there? And why? Is that a buy setup? We ran out of time during the day, but is that a is that a buy setup? We don't have to have symmetry dots. Symmetry dots are just for confluence. We're only looking at the open versus the close of the candle. Symmetry dots are just an added bonus, Gordon. We do not need them. We do not need symmetry dots at all. It's a speed retest. We broke through. We retested, and we went, right? This probably would have ran even larger or longer if we would have ran out of time. The bottom line is, is that my point is, yes, take the first. Yes, take the second. Don't take the third. And that's one thing you have to understand. No, you're good, Gordon. No worries, man. Okay? Let's go to the S&P futures. Gerald's probably pulling his hair up. Trying to shut this thing off. All right. Let's go to the whole trading day on the S&P. The whole trading day says this. Old supply becomes new demand. Old supply becomes new demand. Old supply becomes new demand, right? So let's look at these. Let's, let's go to the left to right analysis, and then we'll move on. So old supply. At 6 o'clock this morning, 545, we keep hitting our head. Bump, 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 bump. Then we break out. Then we retest. Now, I've got to ask you a question right here. Let's see if you guys are being paying attention. Let me see if you're paying attention on how to do this. On that retest right here, after it broke out of supply and testing the symmetry dots, is this a buy right here at this low? Yes or no? Is that a buy? Come on, man. It just broke out of supply. It's the first retest. Let's get long this, right? Good job, Tim. Good job, guys. 
No, we do not want, you want the body of the candle above it. Listen, we're not going to catch them all, guys and gals. That's just the bottom line. We're not going to do it. It just, it's, it's not a possible. But we can be smart enough, we can be educated enough, we can be smarter than our trading opponents to know to stick to trading rules. The trading rule says that if I break out of a, if I break out above a supply line, on that retest, I better hold that supply line with the full body of the candle. I don't care about the wicks. It better hold it. Doesn't do it there, right? Now, how about here? Can you get long there? It's hard to see. Let me blow it up. Sorry, Terrence. There we go. Can you get long right there on the, on the, on the demand line? Exactly. So watch. Here is where it broke the demand, our supply line, retested, but we're look at the oscillator. I, I caught some of you right there. I caught some of you. Good job. Some of you caught it. How about here? How about this retest on the full retracement? How about this one? Now we're in full symmetry, right? So that was your major launching point in the S&P on the full retracement right there. Okay. As you go up, there's a nice 12-point move all the way up. Old supply, right? Now let's look where the supply line came from. Supply line came from all the way back here. Right there. Why do you think a supply line was drawn right there from yesterday? Why do you think it was drawn from that exact point? Why? What did the market do? I'm trying to tell you guys how this works as far as why these lines are so accurate. What did the market do? It tanked, right? This market is sold off. So now, do you think retail pushes down? Do you think these are all retail traders? Yes or no? Do you think that's all retail pushing that down? Heck no. And you get a line coming straight across. So, so old supply becomes what? Becomes new demand. So the market was oscillating around. It still worked out to get our targets, but you broke out, retested, full retracement. There's your long. Now, old demand becomes what? What's old demand become? Before I type it in, you guys are starting to get this. Old demand becomes what? New supply. All right. There's your new supply. Is this a trade setup? Let me blow it up. Is that a short? Yes or no? Right there. It is big time because that's the that's the what test. That's the what test. Not only that's where the launching point, it's a first test. All right? You miss it. All right? You miss your you're, you're out. You're down petting your dog, your dog comes up to you, you're petting your dog and you miss it. Is this a cell, the next cell? Yes or no? Yes, second test. And all these from here, I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Right? This one over here, no thanks. This one, no thanks. Right? Don't touch that. Because you had a shot at it right here. If you miss these opportunities on the first and second test, do not try to take a stab. This is very weak order flow. Because what happens is you already took the stops out. 
this already took all the stops out. Stops are right here, basically, right below the, the uh, demand line. All these stops that got long here, right, they're probably sitting right around that level. Right there. So takes the stops out, takes the stops out, retest, retest. These don't touch. Yeah, it's a flat market too, but it's just to show you. When to scale, Terrence, you can scale using your ATM, and you can scale using symmetry dots. Your goal is to go zone to zone, though. Our goal, I want to look for a break retest with trend, okay? I want to look for a break retest with trend. If moving averages are down, I'm going to look break retest with trend. It's that simple. I want if, – if moving averages are up, look, we're above the 50 all pretty much day and down below the 50 pretty much all afternoon. I had a break when, when, when we're going up. I want demand to break when we're going down. The exits, you're trying to get zone to zone. You scale your first contracts. Depending on how many contracts you do, and you try to go zone to zone, Terrence. Okay?